paradigms of reincarnation? Well, um, reincarnation uh, isn't just simply a cycle of um, death and rebirth in which you just come round again and again um, without any particular direction to it. Um, there are schemes, uh, underlying schemes, operating within the system of death and rebirth, mostly but not exclusively um, relating to karma. And I've um, begun here with um, karmic accounts. Now, if you have uh, unsatisfactory dealings with somebody uh, in one life and you say, well, don't let it go, you never forgive, never forget, um, not only will that affect your scanders in, in a future life, but that will form a karmic account with the, the other person um, in which you may well settle the score in a future life. And if the other person is sim you know, similar attitude, doesn't let it go, they may again uh, settle the score at some, some future point. Uh, the main problem with this is that your spiritual development of both of you remains on hold until you actually let it, let it go. And all the religious systems seem to say, let it go. Um, that seems to be something you know. Forgive forgiveness is, is a is a big um, a big component in um, most religious philosophies. So anyway, that's um, so let it go. Um, karmic atonement. Um, if you've done something or behaved in a certain way in one life, and the opportunity to behave in that manner in a future life then is taken away, that's a karmic result, um, then you, you possibly have to live a life without certain advantages that you had in the previous life if you've abused those, say, opportunities or privileges. I mean, um, I, I believe that um, I've abused, um, I had authority in, in a previous life and as a, I abused that and as a punishment um, I have now have to live a life in which um, nobody takes the blindest bit of notice of me. So, um, karmic atonement, yes, there may, there may be something that you're working through in a, a current life um, that's a disadvantage as a result of a, a previous behaviour in a previous life. Um, reincarnation in families, um, yes, so some people actually can, can identify the um, members of their families as they've been in the past and have gone into past life regression and identified a person within that life, a member, a member of their current family, um, who was say like their, their brother in one life, their father in another, their mother or daughter in, in another life. And um, yes, that, that does make sense, the, these karmic links that you are linked, well you probably meet people all the time you've met in past lives, but there are these, these links within families and the cycle of death and rebirth. Uh, reincarnation in groups, I think the best known is um, Arthur Gurdon's Cathars. Um, Arthur Gurdon was a um, uh, NHS psychiatrist in Bristol um, in the 1960s and he claimed that many of his patients uh, had some link with a very traumatic event in the 13th century relating to the persecution of the Cathars and that they were all being reborn uh, within the same, um, but within the same area, but were all meet, meeting up again. Um, he was, um, he maintained client confidentiality with this, so we never found out actually who, who his Cathars were. They didn't come forward as a, as a group, but in many ways that does make sense that people who went through a similar event at some point in the past would again be linked karmically and would, would come together at some point in the future. So that, that's uh, something to consider with um, the paradigm of, of reincarnation that possibly you, um, re, you know, you, you're reincarnating with and you meet people with uh, a past life link uh, that you, you have common experience from the past. Um, role or group reversal? Um, I think that's mentioned in the Bible, he who is um, first will be last. Um, yes, 
um, possibly even without having abused power, um, it may be that you experience power and prestige in one life and it, you don't have it in another as part of the learning process or possibly karmically you've abused power. Uh, an oppressed person may find themselves in power or in a position of power in a, in a future life and that's uh, possibly there are um, within Hinduism some people that actually believe this that they uh, within the caste system they will be um, as a reward for um, a good life will be born again higher, higher up the caste system um, although the caste system now is, is being phased out um, that's um, something along I think that's along the lines of uh, role reversal anyway uh, whether in the West that's, that's really caught on that um, a reward for um, a poverty stricken life is, is a rich life in the future or you will experience you know better better things in a future life uh, I'm not sure that that has, uh, has really um, caught on in the West although reincarnation is, is um, quite um, ac well accepted now um, finally it's strategic atavism that's, um, that's entirely one of my own um, I maintain that some people are reincarnated with ideas from the past to reintroduce them. That there are figures within history, and I think um, W.B. Yeats, uh, with his um, revival of the Celtic tradition, Celtic mysticism, uh, was in many ways a strategic atomist, um, that he, he introduced ideas from the past and revived an interest in um, the Celtic tradition. And there may be many figures, people in all walks of life, who brought who've reintroduced ideas from the past in fact that may be tied in with group um, reincarnation that groups of people are um, return as, as a group I mean possibly Arthur Gurdon's Cathars um, Cathars are quite um, well known now um, and there are even um, I understand modern Cathars there are, it's um, uh, neo Catharism I think it's referred to as uh, Catharism has been um, been revived. So, yes, these I th this may be the the case that some people are coming back from the past to reintroduce ideas, and I would refer to that as strategic activism. Um, also, there is no actual theory of history. There has been an attempt, um, or several attempts, to turn history into a social science, and that's never really worked. Um, Leif Tolstoy's War and Peace was an attempt to create a theory of history. And the missing component may be the idea of strategic atavism, that people actually reincarnate from, from the past. And if you look at um, uh, Winston Churchill's This Sept Denial, which they ran on Radio 4 about 20 years ago, I think it's available uh, on CD, and it takes uh, British history from the Romans, um, I think originally up to about the turn of the 20th century, but they've um, written some more and brought it up into the 1970s and that illustrates the cyclic nature of history the number of times that the same situations and power paradigms return um, in, in society and that it, over a period of, of sometimes several hundred years and the same situations come around again so I think strategic, strategic atavism is definitely something uh, worth looking at.